I love driving a Defender year-round, whether or not it's a beautiful sunny day or there's some mud around to play in, or even in the winter when the snow falls. It's one of those vehicles that you can just have fun in no matter what the weather and no matter the time of the year. But we do get a lot of questions from people concerned about driving a classic car or a Defender in the winter with snow or rust or rain or water. And we say it's fine. There's a lot of things that you can do to make sure that it's an enjoyable year-round vehicle from making sure that you have a strong battery, putting winter diesel in, to just making sure that you're cleaning the chassis uh, and giving a good wash every once in a while. It's no different than any other car you might own. It's just there's some preventative maintenance that you have to do to make sure that it stays in tip-top shape. And if you do, there's a lot of fun to be had. Defenders like Sopris, which has a 200 TDI turbo diesel in it, just needs a little bit of a hit of the glow plugs on a nice cold day to get the engine heated up a little bit before you crank around over and let her uh, purr. So I'm going to take you along in an average day. This is uh, Sopris. Uh, it's a little Defender 90 pickup. It's been a soft top. It's been a hard top. It's had no top in its life, but it's one of those uh, defenders that we just love at the shop and it has such unique character and I've been driving it around this week you know in the snowy weather uh, and we're gonna run a few errands and kind of show you what it's like to drive one of these things on a daily basis in the winter. I will confess that I live about three miles from the workshop about six minutes away on a nice sunny day. Today it'll probably take me seven but uh, it's just a little neighborhood. There's a little grocery store, coffee shop, and then down the highway, one turn, and we're there. Uh, it's nice and easy to pop in all the time. So if you are visiting the area, come in anytime you want. Um, it's pretty easy for me or one of the guys from the workshop to get on over there. So here we are coming up to the workshop and you know if you haven't been in the area or if you've just seen pictures from the outside we're, we've got this parking up top and then we're kind of tucked in in this nice little nook down below share uh, the space with a couple other small companies and we kind of get together like a crazy little family at times winter can get a little chaotic with uh, parking um, but we work our way around it and uh, kind of make do with what we got So one of the errands that we're going to run today is we're picking up some new wheels and tires for Jake's Audi there. He's uh, one of our lead preservationists at the workshop and had a kind of blown out flat tire this morning coming into the workshop. He drives uh, anywhere, well, on a day like today, probably takes him about an hour and 45 minutes uh, to get up to the workshop. But uh, So we're going to go over a different part of town and pick up a used set uh, so he can have some nice winter tires. And here we are cruising down the highway, probably going 55, 60, um, keeping up with traffic, passing a couple cars. Uh, but, you know, it makes for a nice little driver. Kind of cruising through this is an area of North Minneapolis where we found uh, a guy who had a set of Audi uh, wheels and tires that will fit Jake's car. And we're kind of big fans of preservation and kind of reusing stuff when we can. Plus, it's near impossible to get a set of these uh, wheels and rims in the middle of the winter. Uh, when you need one. So uh, this guy had a set of four, so we wandered on over there and, you know, we had Sopra so we could load them up in the back and uh, bring them on back uh, to the workshop so he could put them on and drive home again tonight. On the way back from the place where we picked up the tires, we decided to take some back roads through an area which used to be near my old office. And uh, this is a little cafe that I used to have lunch at almost every day, whether or not I'd go there or they would deliver it to my office that was a few blocks away. And it's fun when you go to a place like this that hasn't changed in years. It's probably been three and a half, four years since I've, I've been in this place. And it still has great food, the same people working there. Just one of those really great little cafes. And one of the fun things that about driving Defender is that they're unique and they stand out. And as we were coming out of Cup of Java, a guy pulled up across the street with his two kids, got out and and kind of yelled across the street. He's like, hey, is that a Bishop truck? And uh, we laughed and had a good conversation with him. And he had been following us and just wanted to say hi. So that was kind of fun. You know, when you got a Defender like Sopris, a little errand to go get some tires or just 
go off to the store or something like that, suddenly becomes a, a fun little break in your day. Uh, especially since after we brought the tires back, we probably fought for another four or five hours on a TD5 project we're working on to the point where we just kind of called it a day, said, hey, let's try again tomorrow. So I hopped into Sopris and uh, drove home where I'll probably stay up and, and look for parts and, and answer emails um, and go from there. So that's like a mini day in the life of a, a Land Rover Defender driving in a Minnesota winter. And, you know, it was such a beautiful evening where the fresh snow was, was everywhere and the lights uh, was shining off of it that I decided to pull the drone out and uh, just get a few little closing shots to kind of lead us on the way out. <laughs> 